and we're back for another Teas and Treasures journey. And I've got little Gia here. She had a haircut. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> she had quite a bit of hair removed by me because it is a little bit warmer here. So I'm going to stop this for a sec and put her down and then I will be back. Okay, so now I wanna tell you ahead of time, it's gonna be a longer show today because obviously I have a lot to talk about. There's gonna be a little something at the end I wanna discuss with you guys, but I'm gonna start out with something that I've been like totally hooked on. That is, and it'll be no surprise to you, Simpson and Vale, who I am like totally in love with this company. Uh, I, I happened upon this black tea, just purely by accident, Dunmore East Blend, okay? And it's a pure black, I'm sorry, I have a little bit of something over there, a little fuzz, probably from Gia. Um, I wanted to read to you the actual description that got me interested in this particular tea. First of all, I'm going to tell you that they do a phenomenal job on their catalogs. I've talked about it before. Gia, you left me with a little hair on my lip. Okay. Uh, this was their fall of 2020. Okay. And all you have to do is <laughs> register. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, get on their thing. And <laughs> Sorry. You know, I do not edit. So this is all going to be in there. Okay. This is their fall 2020. Like I have said before, you can spend an hour easy going over their teas. They do a great job in their catalog. This is their new one, Spring 2021. And I just wanted to read to you <clears throat> the Dunmore East Blend. Okay. It's named for a small fishing village on Ireland's southeast coast in County Waterford. Delightfully bold blend of teas with a golden cup, a malty flavor and a slightly fruity aftertaste was created to honor Cindy's wonderful memories of holidays in the village visiting her friends. This is one of our favorite blends, mine also. Uh, perfect as is, but also delicious with milk or sweetener. I always put in, uh, nut milk in my teas and a little tiny bit of honey. It's so good. I mean like, oh God, I, I mean, I don't even know how to tell you how good it is. I just had to save these from the last show I did. I'm on the third one and it's a, a much bigger one and I've ordered more. So, you know, I was really into the T2's New York breakfast, which I still do like, but this one, I have probably six mornings a week um, now. This one is the new black tea for me. And uh, I also have it in the afternoon. <laughs> I even have it at night. Okay, don't do that though if you can't do caffeine. The thing that I love about Simpson and Vale, and I'm just gonna go on a little more here, is you know they do have great descriptions for all their teas, but there's one in particular. I, this, there's something about this company. I wish I knew the history. If you are from Simpson and Vale or have anything to do with them, please email me. My email is below. I'd love to know, like, how long. I know you guys have had this company for quite a long time, but at the beginning of the catalog. They've been doing teas for 92 years. 92 years. I mean, that that is a long time. And they know their teas. I mean, they're really good. Uh, Morgan Blend. I just have to read this to you. Correspondence at the Morgan Library in New York City shows the association between J.P. Morgan and Mr. Vale. Back in the early years of the company, these esteemed gentlemen created a most distinctive tea blend. The original formula for Mr. Vale and J.P. Morgan is still used today in creating their unique blend of our Earl Grey, Lapsen Sushan, and other hugger mugger teas. The mellow smokiness of this blend is definitely an acquired taste. Now, I haven't tried this one, and I'll tell you why. Um, I do like a little smoke, a very little smoke. I don't know how much smokes in this tea, but there's so many other teas that I'm still in the midst of trying. In fact, I've got another one that'll lead me into my next, um, that I've tried with them. And I mean, they just, they have a ton of wonderful teas. You know, these are all their wellness teas now that they came out with. I haven't gotten into the wellness teas. I've said it in the past videos. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just haven't gotten, you know, 
there's so many other teas I want to explore. And it's not that I'm not into wellness teas. It's just there's so many good things that come from most teas that, I don't know, I just feel like, for me, it's just not. Okay, let me wheel over here. Um, my next, I want to go and stay on Simpson and Vale while we're talking. I'm still trying to get rid of Gia's fuzz. Okay, so just don't mind me if I keep doing that. Uh, Simpson and Vale's Apple Sage Black Tea. This one is a really, really, really unique tea. It's, it's really good. And if you like apple and sage, it's also it also has blackberry tea leaf in it. Tea leaf in it. It's one of those days today. Okay. I did have this, and you could definitively taste the apple, the maltiness, uh, a little hint of the sage. It was not overpowering. I know, you know, when people think of sage, they think, oh, sage is it's like the chicken, the turkey stuffing at Thanksgiving. But no, this was really, really, really quite enjoyable. Um, okay. New teas. Dessert by Deb. I was finally able to get her teas. And she's in Canada, just so you know. It's called Dessert by Deb. And another thing about Simpson and Vale, they're local, meaning in the U.S., I believe it's Connecticut, and they ship out right away, okay? And Desserts by Deb is also very good at, about the, her shipping, you know? It just takes a longer whenever you order from out of the U.S. If you're in the U.S., you know. If you're not in the U.S., it's completely different. Okay, so this is a green tea, and I'm not a big green tea person, but this one is a Hosha cinnamon, I don't know if I'm saying that right, cinnamon raisin bread pudding. With this one, what I found was, yeah, it does. It tastes really like raisin bread pudding. You can taste the raisins in there. Um, it's really good. I would suggest, this would just be my recommendation, um, steep it for a good length of time because you want all those flavors. I, I'm used to just steeping things maybe a minute and a half sometimes two minutes. Uh, the Dunmore East blend, I do about a minute and 40 seconds. Um, but the dessert by Deb, I would say definitely like maybe at least five minutes, okay, for sure. And remember, it's a green tea, so you're going to go a little bit lower in your temperature. You don't necessarily have to have a special kettle. Just take it off after it's on a rolling boil and let it sit for a little bit, just a little bit, and then put it into your green tea. Okay, now I wanted to recommend also, there's a blog that I get, and that's from uh, Marianne Rolano. If you like tea, go on to her site and find um, Life is Better with Tea. That's the name of her blog. In fact, I don't know if, no. she's doing, she did a whole thing this month. The one I just got, I think today, it's on Darling Teas, if you like Darling. She goes into explaining the first, the second, and the autumnal flush, and the differences between those. So now is the time, if you're really into um, trying, wanting to try it if you haven't, or if you like those types of teas, now would be the time to order the first flush, because that's your summer flush, I believe. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the summer flush. Anyway, I kind of lost over it, but, and I printed it out so that you would know. Also, I want to tell you, oh, she's also offering a 10% off coupon on the first flush from T-Box. So that's another company um, that she's recommending you could. <laughs> okay. If I start laughing, I'm not going to stop. Okay, I have to have a little water. Okay. Now, I should have put that somewhere else. It was easier to get to. Yeah, David's Tea. This is like a matte green. You, I don't even think you can get it anymore, but in case you were wondering, it's just one of their uh, tumblers. Okay, so Marianne Rolano um, had, um, well, on one of her blogs, she had uh, her favorite Earl Grey. And I always thought, well, you know, I like Earl Grey. And I'm not an Earl Grey like every day, but I do like Earl Grey. And I like to try the different Earl Greys. And I've told you in the past, in one of my reviews, my favorite, hands down, and I've tried a lot, is Taylor's. And you can get it in the grocery store. It does come loose leaf. That's the one I use. 
excuse me, and I love it. But she mentioned that she liked Smith Tea Maker, and I thought, well, if Mary Ann thinks it's one of the best, I want to try it. You know, we don't always agree on everything. I mean, not her and I, but me and anybody. I mean, we all have our own tastes. So Lord Bergamot is the one that I ordered. And as you can see, I ordered quite a bit of it. But I do like Earl Grey. Yeah, it comes in a little plastic thing that you open up. And I leave mine in the plastic thing sometimes. Very fragrant. Um, this one actually has uh, the Ceylon and Indian black tea scented with the essence of Italian bergamot. Okay. Now, I'll be honest. It's good. It's very good. But I'm going to tell you, it's second to Taylor's, in my opinion. Marianne's recommendation was really good. But this is second to the Taylor's of Harrogate. And you can get that in some grocery stores. So, um, I mean, it's not, it's probably $10.85, maybe 11. Um, so it's not an issue of that it's a cheap tea, but it's a good tea, you know? Okay, so those two things we have finished. I want to tell you too, um, I tried another one that I'm gonna discuss with you. And I know I talked about Happy Turtle Tea, she had one called Everyone Loves a Yule Ball, and she does hers off. This one was a Harry Potter-inspired black tea. She has all different types that she does. This is a black tea, cinnamon, lemon peel, clove, coffee beans, dried oranges, natural flavors, gingerbread-infused sugar. This was really an, uh, an interesting blend, and I enjoyed it. Yes, I mean, it's you can... You can, you can capture all of those flavors I just read, which is not easy. You can. One doesn't override the other. And, you know, you'd think the coffee would, but it doesn't. Um, Andrea has this company, and it's she does a wonderful job, wonderful job with her teas. She's got a wonderful selection, and they're beautifully blended. Um, when I speak of a boutique tea company, when you hear me refer that to that, it's going to be a tea company that's basically run by one or two people. It's just a specialty tea company. You're going to get really state of the art, what you know, one of a kind type blends. She has a boutique tea company, and also um, uh, necessities. She's a boutique tea company. Uh, there's quite a few that have cropped up. You know. Uh, smaller companies but they do a great job with their blends I know I've uh, mentioned evil teas and brutalities um, there's quite a few I uh, can't think of all of them right now there is one tea that I'm going to tell you that did not agree with me <laughs> I mean like did not agree with me to continue to drink it okay and I'm gonna you know because I don't want you to think I'm all Pollyanna because I'm not I'll tell you the truth raspberry brownie uh, I love whistling kettle teas I do and I've done re a lot of reviews on their teas but raspberry brownie no 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 black tea milk chocolate drops white sugar raspberries natural flavors I don't know where it went wrong because the description sounds really great right but I don't know. <coughs> it was too artificial. It was too artificial. I mean, it, I, I, I don't even know what to blame of the of all of these. It could be the raspberry or the natural flavors. You know, I don't know what natural flavors some of the companies refer to when they use them. And I know that that's come up recently. People asking about that for more clarity because we all kind of don't know you know what what do you mean natural flavors is it natural I know we know artificial but natural flavors could mean a lot of things that maybe you don't necessarily want in your teas I don't know I wish sometimes they would get some of them do get very exacting in what they put in but um, natural flavors I, I don't know I'm gonna blame it on the natural flavors I don't know it just did not agree with me I didn't even finish the cup I might have had three sips if I had that many and that was being
gracious. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be fun. Let me just have a sip of my tea. And this, what I'm drinking now is uh, Burden Blends, the Canadian company Burden Blend. They're affogato. And of course it's uh, cold now. It was hot, but it's the temperature's gone down. I like my tea style cooler. Okay. And you can't get this cup. I'm sorry. This is a ugh, love this cup. Uh, this was from a tea spot, and they don't carry it anymore. But I'm trying to think of how you can get it. I think it's called Steepware. And if you go onto um, maybe a Google search for Steepware, that might come up. Because they stopped carrying them, they were beautiful. They came in, they're real satiny, and they I did a review on that cup, and they have an aqua color, well, light blue, yellow, the green teal, very, very nice cups. Um, I don't know why they stopped carrying that, but anyway, that was the tea spot. Okay, so now I came up with this, oh, here's, here's let's go into our treasure part of the, the show. Where are we at, the show? the video. I'm already at 15 minutes. It's going to be a little longer, but just relax. Make yourself a cup of tea. Stop the video if you need to. Okay. I love this. Like I needed another piece of teaware. I didn't. But you know, some, well, here's what I do. I'm going to tell you because I kind of feel like, you know, when I start adding more teaware, I always try and like donate like to make room. So there may be older pieces of things that I didn't want. Uh, China that maybe I bought years ago and it's just taking up some space that I don't use. And so I do um, donate that to charity. But um, this is T Forte and I have ordered all of my, They some people call them Katie, I call them Kati teas. I don't know why I want to do that with the A, but it sounds better, I don't know. But anyway, this is their K-A-T-I, Kati Cup, okay? And I must have, well, I, I have quite a few of these already, but they have beautiful designs and they're beautifully well made. Now, Adagio makes one similar, but not the same designs. I don't know if it's exactly the same. It's kind of on the same way they steep and looks similar. But I love these teas. For me, they work well because, <coughs> I'm gonna break it in front of you. They work well because of the thick, um, ceramic wall okay uh, for me I find it makes my tea more palatable as far as it's not super super hot maybe other people find when they put the top on that they can keep it warmer longer I couldn't tell you that because I don't like my teas really boiling hot you know I've said that before but anyway it comes in a beautiful box so if you're thinking or you have anybody that you want to buy a gift for this is really pretty okay I just want you to see, I mean, everything T Forte does is really, really very classy. And um, I just thought this design was great. It really is. And this is the cup in case, sometimes when you see it in person, it's a lot better than um, just on their catalog. You know, it's a flat dimension on a catalog, so you really can't get that. It's very shiny, beautiful yellow, and I hope it's not looking an odd color yellow because as I'm looking into there, it's almost looking neon. It is not neon. It is not neon. Let me pull it back. It is really a very pretty yellow. Yeah, as I get away from the light, you're getting a little bit of a better. It's not neon-y. It's just a happy yellow, and it's got a really nice cap on it. And um, the one thing about T Forte is they have these. So if you ever like are you know somehow klutzy like I can be and it drops and falls, you can order just the cap, which I love. You know, I love that. And it's got a little bit of a rim. And then you know you steep it and it's got a beautiful metal, very fine mesh steeper. And here is the consistency. So okay, let me just my screen just went dark. Okay, so there's the consistency. Hope you can get that. You see, it it kind of narrows down a little bit as you get toward the bottom. So you do have a thick wall. Okay, it's not super heavy. It's very comfortable to hold. And that's another thing. I mean, when you're holding a cup of tea, yes, you have a handle most of the time. This one doesn't, but you're never going to feel that heat come through. It's just, it's very well made, and it doesn't. Uh... Okay, let's take a sip of water. Okay, so now. 
did you ever buy a tin from a store <clears throat> just because you liked the dimension of the tin? I have. And it, it was at, uh, oh, I think it was at Costco and it was several months ago. And it had some type of um, butter cookie. I, I, I wasn't eating them. My husband is the sweet tooth person. So I bought them for him. They were like French or something, you know. And I loved the dimension of the, this tin. And I thought, well, I can always use it for tea. So he finished the cookies and I started to put my big bag of tea in there, you know, the big bags. And every once in a while he'd go in the kitchen and he'd think there would still be cookies in there. So I thought, that's kind of, that's not good. I got to do something about that so that he doesn't think he's going to get a cookie and then he opens it and it's just tea. I get excited about tea, but he doesn't. So what I did was, um, in four minutes, literally, I just want to mention this to you guys because I'm not a crafty person. I am an artist, but I'm not a crafty person. So, um, and I admire some of the crafty people because they're really good at what they're doing. Uh, I took was, I don't know if I'm saying this right, W-A-S-H-I, washi tape, am I saying? I don't know. But you guys know the tape that's really decorative. Okay, so I had some tape and all I did was covered the actual tin and I put some of the labels of the samples I had because I have a lot of samples from Whistling Kettle and yes that's the one I just dished out and said I didn't like but as you can see this one I didn't like but I do like a lot of their teas and I didn't finish the ends here I'm sorry see like somebody that's a crafter would have done all of that perfectly but I just I wrapped it in this tape okay and then I put the names of the company and then <clears throat> inside are all of my samples okay and this worked out really well so I thought well oh you know what other washi tape I actually had this tape because I was <laughs> framing to do an art deco uh, mirror you know it worked out really well but then I had so much tape left over and so then I had a, another washi tape and it was kind of fancy and I had so many of Dessert by Deb's samples, and I had an extra Taylor's by Harrogate tin that I did this one. It's not as, but see, it's just, it's so simple. It's so simple, guys. And you got a whole, you know, all of her teas are in there, so I know all her samples are in there. And it was an easy way to do it. I mean, it, you know, I could have taken it outside and spray painted, and I wasn't going to get into that. So... <clears throat> Anyway, let's see, we're at 22 minutes. So now, most important part of what I wanna talk about, and I really feel compelled to talk about this. Um, last month, it was kind of a, a rough month. We had a couple you know, people in the family that had passed away, but um, that's not why, what I'm talking about here. This part of the video Okay, how am I going to start this for you guys? Um, probably, I would say, the very first part of April, I was on <clears throat> YouTube. Just, you know how we all watch, I mean, I love to watch YouTube videos. And a video came up, and I'm sure it was an algorithm issue from YouTube because they do um, match up whatever you might have been watching or something that they feel that could relate to what you enjoy watching. And this video came up and you know, you guys, some of you might have heard about this, some of you might be aware of it and a lot of you might not. So I thought long and hard about, you know, what I could do. And I thought, well, if I talk about it and it helps one person, then I've done something. Uh, have you ever, seen something, watched something, been around something that has changed you? Well, this video that I'm going to tell you about is going to leave you changed. And I don't ever want you to feel like I'm going to recommend something that's going to me make you feel depressed. That's not my intention. That's not what this is about. I would never want you to leave viewing one of my videos feeling worse than you started. That, that's not what this is about, okay? It's about inspiration, but more than anything in life, it's rare, but it happens that sometimes we actually witness true grace. 
And I'm not talking about the grace, the gracefulness of, you know, walking through something or I'm talking about true grace. And I actually decided to, to look up grace itself as a noun. A disposition to show kindness or compassion, a willingness to grant favors or make concessions. So <clears throat> this video comes up on my feed and it's titled and it's it's a person I've never heard of. It's a channel I wasn't subscribed to and um, it's called the hardest video I will ever make and I thought wow now it's already like I don't know maybe three in the morning and I'm thinking I can't <clears throat> not watch this. I, I just have to see what this is about. What what could this be? And it, the the name of the channel was The Needy Homesteader. Needy, K-N-E-A-D-Y, like you're kneading bread. Kneading bread, okay. So I'm thinking the needing home, needy homesteader, well, what's the hardest video? She, if she's making bread, what could it be? The yeast didn't, I mean, you know, I'm, in your mind, you're thinking, well, who, that's a really dramatic title to put on a video. And I just didn't feel that this was a, a what do they call that, clickbait kind of thing. I just felt like this was, this, there was something here. So my instinct said to watch it. And this was about two months ago. Her video is dated March 2nd. And I will put this information below. Um, the only thing I can tell you is that you will witness grace. True grace. Heather is the woman that has this channel. She has had a horrific tragedy. And uh, this video will move you. It will change you a little bit. And if anything, it may change your perspective. Through everything that our country and the world basically has been going through, this woman had a horrible tragedy. And it changed her whole life, her struggle to live, her children, and her husband. And I could go into more. I, I just don't know how much I should really go into because I'd really rather you hear it from her. Um, she just gives you a new perspective of things just by the way she's handling this. If you look at her, here's what I think. If you, you know, I've tried to uh, make a point at least of watching some of her videos pre accident day. She had, there was an accident. And um, I know that helps her on her channel. She is a very successful woman. My thing, this little channel here is like a piece of dust compared to, I mean, she has so many subscribers. It is just very, very, very successful and very obviously well known. Although it wasn't until I saw this video, you know, that I find I did subscribe obviously and I've been watching her uh, videos to help her, but, um, she did uh, have an accident with when they were coming home from dinner and the accident the drunk driver that hit her killed her husband her two children were terribly injured and she was struggling to live and her one little son I guess had to watch his daddy die it, it, it just it tore my heart to know that somebody so selfish to drive their car when they were inebriated could take so much and create so much heartache I've been through this years ago and I know I know what it feels like to have somebody taken like that so all I'd like to say is if you could watch it I think it would um, be inspirational to you to see how she's handled it it was inspirational to me and um, if you might want to take the time and watch a couple of her videos, it would be the videos uh, marked before March. She has some that are recent that are called Inspired By, and these are other uh, people, I think, in the homesteading community that do different things. Her actual uh, channel is very, very informative. She makes phenomenally beautiful breads and she makes it look easy uh, she does bread she does cannings pizza 
I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that Heather has done and her husband has been in a lot of them. I don't know how she's, if you take her tragedy and, the, and you know, you worry about your children. She, she, she was in this hospital just struggling to live. I mean, literally finding out her husband is no longer, her children are basically needing a, a tremendous amount of healing. And through that all, she's dealing with this situation with this, I don't even want to go into words because I know I'm on YouTube, but that she couldn't see anybody. She couldn't grieve to anybody because there was nobody there. Nobody could go near her because of this situation that we've all been thrown into. How cruel. sorry I just have to stop this for a minute okay I'm sorry I, I wasn't gonna I was hoping that wasn't gonna happen and uh, I'm sorry I uh, don't want to bring you down I just would like to say give it a chance make a cup of tea or coffee and listen to her video uh, she also has one that she did a little bit later where she was thanking everybody uh, she does have a little P.O. box. People are sending her cards and little, you know, gifts and stuff. And her older son did open up a, a GoFundMe, which I think he has closed now. Uh, because I think it's been a little over two months. And I don't know anything about those, if there was a time limit on that or what. But she is just one of the most gracious people. And has been through one of the cruelest and most horrific tragedies, I think, that I've heard, at least, in a very long time. And I hope she heals and if you are a praying person and you can pray for her and her family that would be great if you're not a praying person and you could just send her some great intentions that would be wonderful too I'm sure she would appreciate it anyway I think she'll inspire you that's the that's the upside that I'd like for you to take away from it and maybe after you watch it you'll realize that you'll be more appreciative for some of the things in your life. We can always use that, right? We can always be more grateful. I think I've done enough talking today. And um, until we see each other again, and it'll be soon, because I have more. <laughs> but um, you enjoy the beginnings of summer. And uh, if you want to know when I download again, hit the uh, subscribe bell below. And please feel free to send me an email if you want to. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll see you next time.